Hey friends, just a quick video to share here. Um, it's Creative Commons, so it's okay for me to do this. The other day I talked to you guys about storing rice, beans, and bullets. This is why. Stay tuned. Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and now Debka File has actually come out with the story, urgent consultations in Washington, Moscow on reported U.S.-Russian submarines in firefight. Uh, we have been working with our sources from around the globe today on this very issue. I have been a bit hesitant to bring out the information thus far, uh, but after Deb Kafile has brought it out earlier, I know Hal Turner brought it out, I had already had uh, some bit of confirmation on a very similar scenario, but not quite the way I saw with Hal Turner, more along the lines with what Deb Kafile is reporting. Uh, that U.S. and Russian submarines were in a firefight uh, today. And uh, I have been told from a very high-ranking uh, source from the D.C. area that it is a complicated situation uh, in D.C. this evening. This was earlier today uh, when the only thing that was reported as of yet was a uh, Russian submarine uh, had actually been... Uh, uh, some type of fire had taken place and I was also told that it would be spun in the public eye as an accident. Uh, well, now that news is starting to, to differ already in the media. RT, though, did do exactly what I was told they would do, and that is that it would be spun as an accident. Of course, the next uh, couple of days will really show just how serious this situation is. I was already getting reports from Israel as well. At the same time, I was getting the report about President Pence, where his plane was stopped on the runway. He was sent back to the Pentagon at that very same moment. We had Vladimir Putin was also canceling his own meetings for the day to meet Soigahu, his own defense minister, about a serious situation with the submarine that was now coming back in port. Of course, this had, had actually happened on the 1st of July, and we're just now getting these bits and pieces of this story coming out now. Uh, but uh, as far as my Israeli uh, source that I have, I was told that while all this was going on at the same time when the shift rotation was coming in with Israeli military that normally would come home around 1.30 to 2.30 in the afternoon, suddenly all of Israel's military forces were being called back into the base. And as of midnight Israeli time, those forces were still at the base as they were going through uh, briefing uh, information in Israel. So we are seeing a very serious situation. And I want to take you now to Deb Kafile, uh, where they're reporting here, urgent, the title of their broadcast, urgent consultations in Washington, Moscow, and reported U.S.-Russian submarines and firefight. This was on July the 2nd, 2019, at 22, 2400 hours Israeli time. It is now, of course, 8.47 p.m. Eastern time uh, here in the United States here on July 2nd as we also pick up the same story. First reports uh, reaching Debka's military sources said that a U.S. submarine intercepted a Russian nuclear sub in American waters opposite Alaska. Now that's kind of what was being said with Hal Turner. The Russian sub escorting the nuclear submarine responded with a Balkan 2000 torpedo and scuttled the U.S. vessel. The Russian sub escorting the nuclear submarine responded with a Balkan 2000 torpedo and scuttled the U.S. vessel. Urgent consultations in both the White House and Kremlin were taking place on Tuesday night. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence called off an appearance in New Hampshire after being called to Washington for a conference called by President Donald Trump without explanation. Russian President Vladimir Putin canceled an engagement and headed for the Kremlin to confer with the Defense Minister Sergei Soyhu. Uh, and military chiefs after learning that 14 submarine, uh, submariners died in a fire that broke out on a nuclear-powered experimental submarine in Russian waters. 
This account carried in Russian media varies in most respects from the first report reaching this site and may refer to the separated incident. They reported between 14 to 17 members of an AS-12 nuclear powered submarine died of poisonous fumes caused by a fire aboard the vessel. Now we were being told that 17 people died, 25 were actually injured in this. And on to top it all off, we also know that besides, as we reported yesterday, that the United Arab, excuse me, over to Qatar, uh, the United States had moved in 10 F-22s. Uh, now we're also being told that the United States has sent in F-16s as well, uh, Strike Eagles, also to the region there near Iran. And now Israel is talking about going at Iran alone if the U.S. doesn't do it for them. So on every side, the situation is getting very, very difficult. And as I was told, when we were having the situation with Iran allegedly using uh, uh, mines on the side of the Japanese oil tankers there, that in fact it was actually uh, different operatives uh, that had been trained by the United Arab Emirates or, or United Arab Emirates ISIS uh, Al Qaeda members that had placed those drones there, excuse me, not drones, but placed those mines on the side of the ship to make it look like Iran had actually carried out the attack. Even then, I was asked in an emergency middle of the night request, I was asked to report to you guys that we need to get a private meeting between President Putin and President Trump, a face-to-face -to, -face to, to avert a major war in the region there that could actually have consequences here back at home in the United States. That's not been taken lightly, friends. And as much as I am against war in the Middle East, I'm also against that war spilling over that would affect millions of Americans, not only our, our uh, brothers and sisters who fight in the military around the globe, them being in harm's way as well. So unless cooler heads prevail, or unless we end up with Bolton uh, dominating the conversation about going to war in the Middle East, and dragging Russia into it as well, we're in a world of mess. It also goes on to say the nuclear-powered submarine died of poisonous fumes caused by a fire aboard the vessel. The submarine was described as experimental and unarmed, but often used in spy missions. It is unclear how many of the 25 crews survived. Local media suggests four or five are receiving treatment in Svesmorsk Military Hospital for poisoning and concuss concussion injuries. Another news account said the majority of the officers died in or on their way to the hospital. These reports do not cite the cause of the fire. That's what Deb Kafal is, is reporting on this situation right now. We do know, and I have been reluctant to bring the information out as of yet because I was waiting for some more confirmation information about the situation. Uh, but with Debka reporting this particular part, uh, I felt like that we could be safe to bring out this information thus far. Uh, if we go to Hal Turner, and uh, I actually had one source from DC that did send that information to me from Hal Turner, where Hal Turner is also talking about the submarine. And uh, we have right here, report American submarine torpedoed and sunk off Alaska coast. And... Uh, it says, uh, Hal Turner reported here that the submarine off the coast of Alaska was reportedly torpedoed and sunk during a firefight with Russian submarine after the American sub allegedly intercepted the Russian sub in American waters. The Russian submarine allegedly sustained heavy damage in the fight with upwards of 14 crew killed. Now, I also have another source, intelligence source, that knows more about the Russian sub that was actually uh, 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 hit and I was told that that submarine also is very vital to a defensive posture for Russia's uh, cruise missile capabilities. And uh, I don't have that information in front of me to read to you, or maybe I can. Give me one second. Or no, I can't because I'm actually using my phone to record this broadcast, so I can't read it uh, there. Um, I'll tell you what I can do. Let me do like this here. I'm going to take the screen down for just a moment uh, and I can give you a little bit more information about that situation there as well. So let me just kind of give you a little update here. The submarine that was actually struck apparently 
was a counterintelligence sub. It was designed to interrupt any cyber attack to the Russian ballistic missile defense system and also initiate similar attacks. That's what was actually being shared with me uh, today. And uh, this whole issue about uh, this being just some kind of fire, it was also told to me that that was uh, far-fetched what people are saying about that as of right now. Uh, so the, the, the situation is very fluid, friends. It's very fluid. And, uh, and so I, I just really encourage you to be in prayer, pray for the nation, pray for, pray for both nations, pray for the leadership, both the United States and Russia, that these men will uh, use a little bit more cooler heads and uh, not allow the warmongers in either country's uh, cabinet to push both nations to war. The situation right now with Iran is very serious as well. And so I just encourage you to be in prayer for uh, our men and women in uniform as well. And that, uh, that more lives can be spared. And of course, regardless of loss of life from either side, our condolences to the families because no family deserves to see their family members have to die in such a manner. Uh, now, it is interesting too, and I will say this as well, that when Russia spoke about the incident, they did mention, I think Hal Turner mentions this in his own report there, that the sub, that Russia reported it on RT that they were in Russian waters. Kind of seems odd that Russia would say that unless it could either be true, not be true. Who knows? And I have not looked to see uh, if the time frame of the sub getting back to uh, the, the base there in Russia, if it was ample time, I'm sure it probably was because it would probably go under the ice caps there. Uh, there's a waterway there that they can go up under that ice caps there back into the, Russia's northern fleet base there. Uh, if it was actually Alaskan waters from what I was being told. I also know that there was another issue uh, going on uh, during the training exercise that's underway right now, I believe in the Black Sea. But I'm still not quite sure if there's any relationship to these incidents that, that is happening now. Anyway, I will update you guys as more information comes available. And uh, uh, so just bear with us there and... Uh, you know, listen, I will tell you, and I'll tell you straight up, friends. You know, it's not a bad idea to kind of stock up a little bit as if you were going to have a really bad hurricane, like hitting the Gulf Coast or something. Make sure you have some extra things for you and your family. And, uh, and also, we want to thank you for those of you that support this broadcast as well, because you're the ones that make it possible for us to be able to tell people around the world what's going on. So thank you, and, and listen, I know some people inevitably will end up making comments like, you're just warmongering. No, we're not warmongering. In fact, one of our sources has the confidence that when they share some of these things with us, that it helps avert war. I don't know why. I really don't. I mean, do I really reach that many people? Maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's enough people that we're reaching that it causes you as American citizens to pick up a phone and call your congressmen, call your senators and say, look, we don't want war. We don't want war with Iran. We don't want war with Russia. Uh, we need to see the, 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 the two world leaders sit down together and work out their differences. And I was told that the reason why that's not happened as of yet is because there's too many in his administration as well as the Democrats that are saying that it's all this Russian collusion. You know, there comes a time you have to put that aside for the safety of the American people as well as the safety of people around the world because a war between two superpowers is not going to go over well. And even the situation in Iran could spiral out of control the same way. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live in a world of Ain Shalom. There is no peace. Good evening. So there you have it, friends. I'm not sure how much of this is factual, but I know that the world is in the grip of the devil.
and he's squeezing us for all he can get out of us because he knows his time is short. So I've been trying for years now to push people towards Christ, not follow any man, but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, follow him, keep his commandments, because he says if you love him, you keep his commandments. And there's too many Christians these days giving lip service and not really living it out. It's like life insurance. They say, I believe, I believe, I believe, but there's no fruit. And um, that said, I want to thank those that have helped us. And uh, we do the best we can do to help others. And that's what being part of the body is all about. Now, I might be the rear end of the body, but I'm still part of the body. And every part of the body is important. So with that, appreciate your position in Christ. Do the very best you can because we're all going to be accountable. With that, I love you. Have a good day. Stay close to Jesus. Store some rice, beans, and bullets. Stay close now. Bye now.